incredible atmosphere, electric. And just like what's transpired over the previous nine games at home, to go undefeated, uh, you're a big part of it. And uh, not me, I'm just speaking for everybody in the program, we're very grateful. Good questions. Buzz, you've uh, said several times this season that your guys just don't flinch, but they kind of took it to a, a, another level today in the last four minutes, didn't it? Well, that started with uh, there's only three signs in the in the building. One of them is fight in the middle of the ring. It was a quote shirt from your number one. It was an ex-con that I became friends with that uh, he learned how to read when he was in prison. And so he started studying Muhammad Ali. And as I got to know him, he taught me that Muhammad Ali uh, never blinked. So I started researching all of this and he was helping me and I was reading, I was watching YouTube and how no matter what was going on, Muhammad Ali would never blink, even when he was getting hit, and how he learned to fight in the middle of the ring. And I think when you're in the fights that we've been in, Olin, over the last nine weeks, your ability to not flinch just improves. Because each, each game, I think Florida was the first game at Florida to play in 18 games like we've played in. In the figurative fights, they've learned not to flinch. And I think their ability not to flinch is just, there's example after example after example. Not a player, multiple players, just who's the best player? Don't know. Depends on the day. Who's the best team? Our team has improved with each passing game. And I think today we was another example. I would just talk about just, I mean, Obviously, you guys did a great job, and especially at the foul line. But uh, Travis, almost, you see, oh, <laughs> but, you you almost, but you almost come to expect uh, in a game like a close game that Anderson Garcia is going to make a big play. He made a big one tonight. Just makes winning play after winning play after winning play, and they never show up in the stats. You know, just has incredible instincts. Solo still when they run horns. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jew and Henry at that point were zeros. No rebounds, no points. Solo gets that steal. And then whatever it was, two possessions later, to ice the game. And he gets that steal after they had possession. Just winning plays. More so than maybe some of the other games, seemed like y'all were doing uh, pick and roll with, with Boots and both Julius and Anderson. Yeah. Uh, what was it about the look that, that that came into play a little bit more and found a lot of success with it? Um, we could play them again, so I want to answer the question the right way, but um, it was for sure part of our offensive plan and what kind of screen, who set the screen, and what we were doing on the weak side of that screen. And uh, obviously we do it a lot with four. Um, and to close down the game, we were kind of going back and forth with four and with boots and with whichever forward. And I thought even on the even on the uh, even on the shot clock violation turnover, all of that was good. Uh, I know we didn't get a shot, but it wasn't a live ball turnover, and it wasn't a forced shot, and it was all a part of the prep plan reg regarding that pick and roll situation. And you talk a lot about the guys who do stuff not on the stat sheet, Dexter Dennis, late in the game, mm -hmm. they were just you know right on both Boots and uh, uh, Wade and the calmness to kind of be able to get things under control. How yeah. key was that late? And Yeah, his, um, if he had a choice of what he wants to do, dribbling's not one of them. Uh, but they were face guarding Boots and four. And personally, I don't know their coaches and I don't know their players, but I think it was an early protection against what we were doing on the other end. And our counter um, obviously forces Dex to become a primary ball handler. 
And I thought we managed those possessions at the beginning the right way. And eventually, whether Boots or Ford got it back, Dex did a really good job with everybody being on the same page. Um, when you get to your third option of something and your third option starts at the beginning of the possession, to be able to have that maturity and that uh, comfort, I thought that was really good. Not just Dex, it, all five guys. Buzz, do you allow yourself to even consider what this does for your uh, NCAA tournament seeding possibilities? I might look at it. Um, Coach Geff has done a great job of being my number source. My wife is a lot smarter than I am. Uh, she's pretty aware of it. On occasion, over the last couple of weeks, I've asked them a question or two, but I, I haven't wanted my heart to be full of anxiousness on things that I can't control. Um, I know we don't know who we're playing on Friday, but I'll probably listen to it a little bit more over the next couple of days. Um, I think the one thing, Olin, that I wanted to be accountable for is uh, six and five at Christmas with two quad four losses and left for dead. Um, the burden that our guys and our staff have carried over the last 60 days, I didn't want to not do my part, whatever my part was that particular day. And I didn't think that filling my brain with social media or what Joe Lenardi was saying, um, I wasn't trying to be a jerk to you that day. Like, I just, I don't, I don't want that to infect me because I don't want it to infect our group. And that's the most conference wins in a hundred years. We've lost three road games. Uh, we beat the number two team in the net. We beat the number three team in the net. It's the highest achieving win in the history of Reed, as far as the numbers go, according to Brad. So yeah, I, uh, the regular season's over. And so yeah, I would like to understand it a little bit better. But I'm also excited about the new season. With Dexter, uh, well, did you guys know that he was going to play? And, and with the job that he did on Brandon holding him 723, I know I know he wasn't the only guy guarding Brandon today. Yeah, but. I thought I thought uh, Lyle's plan and the pick and roll stuff that Travis was talking about. I thought Devin's plan uh, and how we handled 24 multiple guys gardening. Uh, they have so many guys that can score. They're so talented. Um, Dexter didn't do anything. Um, we were off on Wednesday. He had a heavy day of rehab. Uh, Thursday, he didn't participate. Uh, and then Friday, I met with you guys and we were gonna see how he went. He shot with me Friday morning. He was fine, but that's not like real work. Um, and then he did a real work yesterday, just not the entire time. And then we got him out a little earlier than we normally do in the first half. Uh, relative to his regular roster, our rotation, just to kind of see how he was. And I think the atmosphere was part of it. I think that it was his last home game as a college player was part of it. He's, he's an NBA defender. He's an NBA wing rebounder. Um, I don't know how many he had. Yeah, I mean, had had seven defensive rebounds in 32 minutes. I, we count on him. With Wade, you've talked about his high risk, high reward thing. He, he had a couple of those turnovers, but then. Yeah, he had the, the one turnover the after visibly, verbally saying time out four times. Yeah. Yeah. With him coming on there at the end, do you almost expect that to happen where there's a negative play for him? He's going to bounce back and have that kind of magic. Yeah, his. Uh, That's arguably his best trait. Uh, and obviously we've been very dependent upon it, particularly in the month of February. And it looks like March is trending in that direction. He's been, I think he's the second leading scorer in the league next to 24 um, in league competition only. He's just been, it's been phenomenal.
Well, it's back in like 06, it was rowdy and crazy. What would you attribute the crowd being more, it's like basketball knowledgeable? You know, still rowdy and crazy, but also it seems like more knowledgeable in terms of basketball. Now. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, at 06, I was 32. And I was just as unknowledgeable as the crowd. Uh, <laughs> I do think Britt maybe a little bit has transpired even in the last two months. Like they've they've been a part of uh, Auburn here. They've been a part of Tennessee here. They've been a part of this game here. They've been a part of Arkansas here. Like you, whether you know what's going on or not, you're getting reps of, wow, this is hard. And that's not good. And we need that. And you can, you can, I don't really, it's not like I'm in, as engaged as I should be probably with the crowd, but you can tell their knowledge is picking up, but what would be the difference from 17 years ago to now? I don't know. I, I think it might be social media, maybe. You maybe, know. maybe. Yeah, that could, yeah, I would say that's for sure a part of it. Everybody's talking a little bit more about what's going on. Yeah, that's probably right. Buzz, with three a little more than three minutes left. You put Solo in with Andy up front. It's been so good. And Henry and Jew were zeros. Yeah. And both both those guys made plays. What did you see? Was it just the speed? Or I thought the thing that was killing us was Alabama on the offensive glass. We were not finishing. I, um, I don't know how many turkeys we finished with. We held them to 0.84 points per possession. They're the fastest team in the SEC. They're the second fastest team in Division I. 50% of their shots are from three. 36% of their shots are at the rim. That was what they were averaging coming in tonight. 86% of their shots are threes are at the rim. And 45% of their shots are in the first 12 seconds. And uh, coming into tonight, uh, today, they were shooting 30 shots from three, making 10. That's 20 long shot, long rebounds. And tonight, they missed 29. And that ball is flying all over the place. It's happening fast. And... We were not finishing with defensive rebounds. The, the one defensive rebound Henry got was in the last minute or two of the game. The, I know the one offensive rebound that he got was in the last minute or two of the game. So we played uh, 42 minutes with our two starting forwards getting two rebounds in the last two minutes. I, I just thought Solo and Andy had a much better presence on the glass, and I thought we had to be able to finish, particularly after that. It's 54 54 at the last media timeout. 347, I think, to play is the last media timeout. It's 54 54. One turkey wins it. You have to finish with a rebound. So that's why we played those guys more. I know uh, a lot of teams on senior night honor their staff, but especially I know with your background, not many managers get videos and their name on the court and yeah. whatever. Why? Why was that important to you beyond maybe the obvious? Well, everybody, everybody has ownership in what we're doing. Um, the coaches that are not allowed to coach have responsibility and have ownership. The players that are not playing have responsibility. They have ownership. Uh, the student trainers, the student managers. I think that's why all of this is so special is the respect that we all have for one another and the genuine love and affection that we all have for one another. And I just think that it's so rare, Travis, in 2023 to have enough humility to go, you're better at this than I am. So you're in charge. And I'm gonna to try to help you, but you're the head coach. Uh, coach Jack is how he's called in our program. And uh, he's in charge of equipment. And if anybody, the best player or a coach tries to do something that is not in line with him, it doesn't work. 
Uh, he's the most beloved student in the whole group. And uh, Dexter didn't want to do a uh, senior night before the game because we've become almost like an occult in our rituals on everything we do. And if you, I mean, I meet with some of those guys once a week. And if I try to alter something, it's like moving heaven and earth to get them off. No, coach, we didn't do this. You didn't say that. Like, oh. and so he was like, I'm not doing it. Okay, well, I, I'll go tell Luke and Landry you're not doing it, but I don't know what the solution is. And uh, just didn't want to alter what we were doing in pregame. But to honor Coach Jack, very deserving. Time for a couple more TV questions. Yeah, Coach, you were able to shut the door on a Bama team that we've seen them not and kind of come back and be able to, to grind out some wins. So what does that do for you guys heading into next week from a confidence standpoint? Well, I, 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 uh, I, I mean, uh, they won the league. Um, they have the highest winning percentage uh, uh, coming into today of any Power 5 team in conference play. In truth, uh, I think our, our guys were receptive to the plan of the coaches, but I think our guys were wanting to win for one another. I think they were wanting to win to cap off a 9-0 and home record in conference play. I think they were wanting to win their 15th conference game for the first time in 100 years. I, yes, they're, they're, they're really good. Good enough to win the national championship. I would say they are for sure a number one seed, maybe the number one, number one seed. You'd have to talk to Dr. Joseph. Um, but but the, the spirit of our group and the intensity and the focus of our group was on us. And so... In a very pure way, I think we were aware of the opponent, but we were trying to be the best we could be. Coach, another career night for Wade. Uh, we know that one Tennessee player says to him, and we saw what he did that game, this game, talking with 24 pretty much the whole game and closing the thing out. Um, is Wade a guy that you probably shouldn't talk trash to during a game? And then in your opinion, is he should be the player of the year? Anything that has to do with votes Texas a and is probably not going to be very successful. Um, and on the on the talking, I, I don't know. Um, I talk to four a lot, so I trust him. But on the other stuff, I'm not sure. Anything else? Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you.